free agent players with the Baltimore Ravens. However, the inquiry has now shifted from Jets defensive coordinator Bill Belichick to another Jet employee. Now, regardless of whether the Jets are penalized for this infraction, I bet it will lead to a new league policy regarding contact between players and opposing coaches. Now, the owners of the Los Angeles King hockey team have offered to buy the Minnesota Vikings and relocate them right here in L.A. Meanwhile, Philip Moss, one of the Vikings' 10 owners, is attempting to purchase a majority share in the team. And a note regarding action today. The Dolphins' Dan Marino will start against the Jets and go as long as he can on his sprained ankle. All right, folks, now that you're not going anywhere for a while, it's time for our Snickers Fox Watch, and we begin in Dallas. Boy, this week after losing two straight, reports had owner Jerry Jones thinking of firing head coach Barry Switzer. As you know, of course, that didn't happen. We'll discuss that a little later in the show, but obviously there are some problems in Big D. Right now, let's bring in Dick Stockton, who's calling today's game. And Dick, one of the problems is finding healthy bodies without a doubt. No question about it, JB. And of course, uh, we'll see what happens with the weather first. We had heavy rains this morning. The field was covered. We expect rain later, but right now, no rain at all. And healthy bodies, Emmett Smith comes to mind. He went out in the San Francisco game last week with an injured groin, but will start today. However, Nate Newton will not play today. He'll be replaced by John Flannery on the offensive line. Good news for the Cowboys in that Chad Hennings is back on the defensive line after missing a month. For the Cardinals, they're going to go with the rookie, Jake Plum. Starting at quarterback, a big defensive stalwart out of action for the Cardinals. It could hurt him today. Eric Swan is out. You have to go back seven years, JB, for the last time that the Cowboys were under 500 at this time. And uh, they're four and five right now. That time was the last period they did not make the playoffs. So a critical game for Dallas today. Right now, let's send you to Washington and Tom Brenneman. Dick, thank you very much. A rainy day in Maryland between this. Four and five Detroit Lions team and the five and four Washington Redskins. Both coaches told us this game could go a long way in qualifying for the playoffs. The good news for the Redskins, they're getting healthier. Ken Harvey returns today after being inactive last week with a shoulder injury. And Michael Westbrook is back for the first time after injuring his knee four weeks ago. The beat goes on for the amazing Barry Sanders. Milestones today is ninth consecutive 1,000 yard rushing season. He can become the third all time leading rusher in the history of the league, and he's going for his eighth consecutive 100 yard rushing road game. Bear in mind, Detroit, including two playoff losses, has dropped 17 in a row to the Redskins. Let's go to Joe Buck in Green Bay. All right, Tom, thank you very much. It's a cold winter day here at Lambeau Field as the Green Bay Packers get ready for the Rams. You know, you get the sense that the world champs are beginning to roll. Their defense has really picked it up over the past couple of weeks after that bye week. Well, that defense today will try to stop a St. Louis offense that a week ago racked up over 500 yards down in Atlanta. But that offense today is without starting left tackle Orlando Pace. Out with a bad knee, meaning Wayne Gandy goes to left tackle and Fred Miller slides in at the right tackle position. You know, the Packers are riding a 20 game home winning streak last team to beat him here at Lambeau the Rams the St. Louis Rams opening day 1995 that's the story here in Green Bay now to Minnesota and Kevin Harlan thank you Joe we're in the dome for the Chicago Bears in the first place Minnesota Vikings who have won five consecutive games despite a ton of off the field controversy if anything these Vikings have been resilient Dennis made a key point when he said these guys are professionals they won't be distracted because a lot of the things that have happened we can't control we have no say so over it and a lot of the information we don't know that much about. So as long as we keep it that way, and as long as we keep our objective as far as winning ball games and winning our division, then you won't be distracted. A win for the Vikings today, their best start since 1976, a Super Bowl year, yet the Chicago Bears have won three consecutive games here in the Dome. The Bears today without their two starting wide receivers because of injury. Right now to Atlanta and here's Sam Rosen. Thanks very much, Kevin. These two teams both won in the closing seconds last week. In Atlanta, the Falcons are thinking about winning two straight for the first time in two years. To do that, they have to keep people healthy, like their middle linebacker, Jesse Tuggle. He's been bothered by a sprained ankle, but is expected to start. The Buccaneers want to make that strong playoff push, but they're worried about Warwick Dunn. He's been bothered by a pull hamstring. That Silla controversy is over. Last week, the Colts complained Brad Culpepper had silicon on his jersey and led to this bad the NFL investigated, said nothing was wrong. Culpepper said about center Jay Lewenberg, I guess the old boy just had a bad snap. Hey, JB, did those guys sitting next to you ever have some illegal substances on their jerseys? 
Sam, I will answer that question in a moment. But for those of you not getting an early game later this afternoon, you'll see one of the following. Carolina at Denver. The NFC East leading Giants at Tennessee. New Orleans taking on Oakland. That'll be later today right here on Fox as we answer Sam Rosen's question about sticky stuff on the jersey. Slippery, slippery stuff. stuff. Slippery, slippery stuff. stuff on slippery. the jersey. No, I, I had what I had was metal spikes up in Green Bay. It was 42 below. They got those coils. They never turned those son of a guns on, on up there. So I had to make a game time adjustment. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So, so, you never what, you never put silicone on your jerseys? No. Never. I How couldn't about even Vaseline? I couldn't even How about never. Vaseline? Never. It's Sunday. Metal it spikes, though. Sunday. <laughs> I, I, I've cheated. You cheat? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get the rest no, of this out right, later. Yeah. Speaking of not, not cheating, Washington doesn't cheat. Washington 5-1 and one with Terry <laughs> Allen as a starter at running back. 0-3 without him. There can't be a more valuable player to his team than Terry Allen. Yeah, I don't think so. You'd have to look for maybe Terrell Davis to be someone who's on par with that. Gus Farad has struggled without Terry Allen. There's no... There's no question about what will lead to success for the Washington Redskins, that if Terry Allen is in the football game. If he's not, they're a totally different team. They get Bob Dahl back at right guard. That moves Trey Johnson, the left guard, match up against Luther Ellis. Trey Johnson, the best pulling guard in professional football right now, is knocking people on their cans on the periphery of the offensive set. People are looking for holes to dig into. I'll tell you what, Scott Mitchell cost them the Green Bay game last week. Four interceptions, two of them were forced. They gave up 10 points off those two picks. They lost 20 to 10. He needs to step up. If they're going to load up the front to stop Barry Sanders, he needs to hit the wide receiver Herman Moore in single coverage. Well, Scott Mitchell is going to load up. He's going to try to throw the ball down the field more this week. They said in the past what they've done is they've thrown it in the intermediate area. They want to throw the ball down the field. And another thing that I'm looking forward to is Stanley Richards and Jesse Campbell, the two safeties. You guys have your work cut out for you. You guys have to make a lot of tackles against Barry Sanders, and that's tough. I can't imagine not being a quarterback and putting up big numbers every week if I've got Barry Sanders back there running the football. Eight men up, and you got Herman Moore out there. I mean, Morton on the other side. Five you can mil. Throw it. You can throw it. Five but mil. I know. Five million? Let it go, Howard. It oh. doesn't even phase me. Five million? Oh, it bothers He's you. not worth five million dollars. <laughs> but the thing, here's the M.O. on Scott Mitchell. Every coordinator I've talked to has said this. you got to hit him, hit him early. He already throws sidearm, and the vision comes down. Here's a guy that in the fourth quarter is going to give that football up. He's proven in time and time again in big games. Gus Farad will get it see done. vanilla coverages this week. Contrast to what he's seen in the past two weeks. If he cannot hit it this week, Gus Farad can't Let me make it. sure I heard this correctly. Is Scott Mitchell worth $5 million? No. Oh, no. Hey, what's a horse no. worth? What are you willing hey. to pay? That's no, the value. No, right. Do you I mean, think he's worth five million? It doesn't matter what I think. Yes, I'm a good. It it's does. Sunday. I it really doesn't matter. What I'm he in a thinks. loving mood. I can't believe this. They back away from it. All right, folks. <laughs> we have just gotten started. I'll try to draw it out of them next time. Here's what else is no on tap way for today's is he show. Worth five million. Today on the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Hey, hey Packers, look out. There's another powerhouse coming out of the NFC Central, and it's a purple people eaten Bob. Pam Oliver checks in with the 7 and 2 Vikes, who are loaded with talent and making folks take notice. And for the first time since 1990, the Cowboys are under 500 in the second half of the season. In Dallas, Doomsday used to refer to the defense, but lately, the word has taken on a whole new meaning. Then, Denver is Elway country, but the way Terrell Davis is racking up yards, it may soon be a two-horse town. TD's the driving force behind the league's top rushing offense. Ronnie gets it straight from the running back, who's running big in Denver. Coming up, coming at you, the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. A reminder, late games coming your way today. Carolina at Denver. New York Giants, first place, taking on the Oilers in Tennessee and Terry Saints. He says they're going to beat Oakland, and Oakland will lay down. We'll find out if that's the case. And a reminder, at 2.30 Eastern and 11.30 Pacific, check out Elvis Stoiko in the Prime Star Skate International of Germany. Once again, that's at 2.30 Eastern and 11.30 Pacific. Skating, something that I know Terry does like better than baseball. Let's come back and talk about some of the late games. Start for us with Ronnie. I like the Giants, and if you look at this football team right now, especially on their defensive side, they got to stop air. 
not throwing the football, but running the football. That's where he's dangerous. And they have to worry about the tight end, Frank Wycheck. If they can stop Frank Wycheck and Eric McNair, they could win this football game. A big key with the New York Giants, they have that same kind of camaraderie that the Green Bay Packers had last year. They believe in one another. They do things socially together. They're a team that's really together. It's a bunker mentality. They stayed out in Olive Branch, Mississippi, out in the middle of nowhere last night to get ready for this game. Fossil's been after their rear end all week, tougher than ever. Nobody believes in us. Coaches are always looking for a hook. That's the hook with the Giants this That's week. That's the bullfrog capital of the world where they stayed. I guarantee they went frog gigging last night. Frog who? Gigging. They went they gigging. Went the gigging. Giants went gigging last night. They frog went gigging. gigging? That's right. See that hat right there? I doubt they Don't went forget gigging. this look. This is a power cap today for the Saints. He Schuler's back at quarterback, and the Saints will beat the Raiders out in Oakland. You heard I, that? I right beg right to differ. Huh? Well, of course We're you will. We're going to wear them I mean, off. We. Oh, we. Well, we hey, going to wear them hey, off. What? Yeah. Harvard win this week. You know what? You know what? You don't think I know what frog gigging is. I got folks down in Hattiesburg shine a flashlight on the frogs, right? And what happens when yeah. you shine a front flashlight on them? Get them. You get them? Get them. Oh, get them. Get them. Get them. Hey, folks, anyway, that's enough wow. for football talk. Remember, coming up later today here on Fox NFL Sunday, late games, Carolina at Denver, Giants at Tennessee, and New Orleans at Oakland. For Ronnie Lott, Howie Long, and Giggin, Terry Bradshaw, we'll see you later. Giggin's Giggin. Watching Fox NFL Sunday.